Hello everyone, this is Iris. Uh, if you're new here, I am a third year college student, usually based in Washington, DC, but I'm currently home in Seattle, Washington, because I will actually be moving to London in a few weeks. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, but this is the second part of my self-discovery series where I talk about techniques and uh, the processes that can help you discover what your purpose is in life and if not discover, then at least work towards it. And I also walk through my own personal experiences with finding purpose. It's a continuous journey, but I think the content of these videos are really helpful for a beginning. So in my last video, I talked about who am I and ways to discover your personality, strengths, interests, values, and also how you can synthesize that together to form a more cohesive version of yourself where you're more confident and more driven. And in this video, I'm addressing the question, how did I become this way? You might ask yourself if what I'm worried about is in the future, why should I reflect on the past? Well, in Mandarin, the phrase for the past, yi tian, the second character actually means forward or ahead of us. And I really like this circular conception of time because it allows us to center on our memories and be aware of its presence, uh, which is a quote that I took from anthropologist Apeli Hawafa. And, you know, this circular notion of time allows us to remind ourselves of how we've grown, how we've changed, and use our memories, our current selves, uh, to inform our future and our future decision making as well, to be really grounded in our values and stick to our core selves. There are three main buckets for discovering more about your past and how that shapes who you are currently. First is inner self-reflection. The second is absorbing what other people say and kind of relating to that. And then the third is dialogue, so talking to other people. Uh, so this is a kind of combination between self and others. I'll then dive into your personal examples for how I've applied reflection into my thinking for you know, what I want to do in the future, as well as understanding more about my current values uh, so that I can make better decisions in the short term and the long term. In terms of internal self-reflection, I think that you can make access of things that already exist. So maybe past journal entries, past, past blog entries, conversations that you've had, roles that you've had, and also create new content. So answering uh, a set of questions and then journaling about that or writing it down. I like to look at old journal entries as my main source because I have been journaling since uh, high school and I even have old diary entries from elementary school that I like to take a look at. Uh, the second is personal history questions. This is about, you know, creating new content through answering a set of personal history questions. There are a bunch of links uh, and websites where you can find, you know, a list of 50 personal history questions where they ask about your own childhood, the experiences of your relatives. Ultimately, the experiences of the people around you and their pasts have also shaped your history as well as your current selves, whether you know it or not. And this is just a tool to have all of the data out in front of you. There are also self-discovery prompts. So this is maybe thinking less about the past, but more about the future and the present. Uh, but again, you're using that as a tool to gather data. So these are questions such as, what do you envision yourself doing five years from now? And you can use your personal history to inform what you write in those journal entries. I also like to look at previous roles that I've had if you're thinking about it more in terms of uh, a career. And I like to think of this not necessarily in terms of concrete job or internship experiences, but rather maybe your role as an older sister or a volunteer or a mentor or uh, an older figure in a debate club. These are all quote unquote roles that are not necessarily professional that still inform what I want to do in a professional context. The second bucket is absorbing what other people say. So I am a big advocate of podcasts. My personal favorite to listen to is Asian Boss Girl. These are uh, a group of, you know, 30 plus year old women, Asian American women who have kind of faced similar struggles in terms of the Asian American immigrant experience, uh, having high parental pressures and meeting societal expectations. And they're like older sisters to me in terms of hearing about their job experiences and kind of relating to uh, maybe not necessarily what they faced on the job, but the pressures, 
and the expectations they had in order to uh, perform well. I think memoirs are also really helpful. Uh, I've spoken about this in the past, but Crying in H Mart uh, is an incredible book. First of all, it's really good. But second, the author investigates her relationship with her mother. And that kind of caused me to think about my own relationship with my mother, uh, both the good and the bad, and to also to begin to have conversations with my mother as well, to dive further into that relationship and see how that has informed my current self. I also like reading personal essays. For instance, my favorite journalist, Jia Yong Fan, uh, she also has a piece on growing up as an Asian immigrant and her relationship with her mother. I particularly like her essay, How My Mother and I Became Chinese Propaganda, because it investigates the sort of uh, filial expectations that she has set for herself um, in terms of, you know, because her mom has sacrificed so much, she feels the sort of desire or maybe pressure to pay her back. Uh, there's this sense of shame if she is unable to make her mom proud. However, what's most important is not just absorbing information, but being able to make connections with it, reflecting on it, noting similarities, but also differences. And the differences, the minor differences are perhaps what matter the most. So in my case, after I finish a meaningful book, podcast, or an essay, I like to journal about it. Um, I like to reflect on how perhaps our experiences are similar or they're different, but also how our mindsets might be similar or different. For instance, on the Asian Boss Girl podcast where they talk about their careers, they expressed that a lot of their focus on getting a accounting or a consulting career was driven by parental pressures, pre-professional pressures, etc. Uh, I personally find that while this is kind of the case for me, that I actually have a lot more satisfaction because I'm able to fulfill a lot of my creative desires uh, through alternative pathways uh, that are not tied to my professional or academic experiences. So such as creating content on the side, uh, dabbling in art, as well as always reading and writing. The third bucket is dialogue, so talking to others uh, in order to understand their experiences as well as allowing them to add their perspective um, onto your own experiences. A few ways to do this. The first is, you know, in a professional sit down with a therapist or a life coach type of situation. You kind of have the expectation that the conversation is going to be about diving into your past experiences. So it's very driven with the goal of uncovering who you are. But I do think that there's a lot more room to do this in other avenues. So I love to go on long walks with my friends or with my parents. Uh, in order to just be curious with one another. Uh, so I will ask intentionally uh, questions to my parents to just discover more about you know, their past uh, educational experiences. Why did they choose the job that they have today? Do they actually feel satisfied? Uh, you know, if you, if you observe that perhaps they're not so satisfied with their jobs, have they ever had a job or a role where they were completely satisfied? Uh, what changed? You know, for me, uncovering the experiences of my immigrant parents and uh, the reasons why they left China and how that has informed who they are today was really meaningful because uh, a lot of those cultural and past experiences shape how they parent uh, and what they have as expectations for their children, aka me. Now thinking about how this applies in my own life, one way it does is through the question, you know, what is your dream job? Uh, before it used to be an anesthesiologist. And really though, if I ask myself, like, why do you want to be an anesthesiologist? Well, first of all, what I really did was, what is the highest paying medical degree uh, and job that you can get? And the first thing that pops up is an anesthesiologist. Well, why did I even want to be a doctor? Because my parents basically told me that my personality is suited being a doctor, whatever that meant, because I was introverted and I liked helping others, uh, these kinds of factors. But if I really think, uh, about it, my personality has changed a lot. I'm no longer as introverted as I was before. I'm no longer as solitary. I like working with other people. And I also like, uh, you know, sharing my ideas to people in a professional context. The next dream job that I had was to be a lawyer. And again, this was one of the quote unquote acceptable career paths that an Asian American uh, daughter can have. And while yes, being a lawyer might align better with my 
interests in uh, public policy, the social sciences, and politics, it doesn't really speak to me. If you ask me, what type of lawyer do you want to be? I can't really tell you what or why I want to be a lawyer other than, you know, financial stability uh, and that sort of policy focus. But again, if I thought about it, it's kind of myopic. I don't even want to do politics or policy or law for a career. Um, there are many other ways to fulfill that interest aside from the professional context. And there are also other ways to achieve financial stability that do not have to do with being a doctor, lawyer, or engineer. So that required me to take a step back to investigate why am I so interested in financial stability and meeting my parental expectations. And as I mentioned previously, uh, through listening to the ABG podcast and by reading the essays about, you know, uh, family history that Jia Young Fan wrote and the idea of, you know, shame and trying to pay back for your parents' sacrifices, I understand the cultural and historical contexts that have caused me to uh, value my parents' expectations uh, a lot more. Also, by talking to my mother uh, about her previous careers and realizing that she was not able to fulfill her dream career because she had to leave it behind and move to the United States, uh, and she wanted me to sort of achieve that stability so that I don't necessarily have to make such a big sacrifice. So why does all of this matter? Well, having gathered all of that data, um, I now can do three things. The first is establishing independence. I can now extricate myself of what my current interests are and what I truly value away from the external pressures and expectations that other people have placed on me. Take my interest in sustainability. It actually dates back way farther than any concept of having a dream career. I remember when I was younger, when I was just five years old uh, and going to China and seeing the poor air quality, I wanted to do something about it. And I created a PowerPoint in Chinese, my very, very limited Mandarin, on how to recycle and how to uh, have more sustainable waste practices. This does not necessarily translate to better air quality, but I knew somehow that there was some connection between sustainable personal practices and a better environment overall. And the avenue that I did this was through education. And as I talked about, my sparkotype is the sage. I'm driven by the desire to teach. And so this informs what I want to do because I know that I want to teach others in some way, uh, to help educate others, to create things that can improve other people's lives in the context of sustainability. The second thing that all this data helps me with is to figure out what I need to work on or what I can dive deeper into. So as I mentioned, you know, a lot of the parental expectations has currently shaped what I am today. So that is something that I really focused on, uh, trying to rework or restructure those expectations so that they work for me rather than against me. This really meant establishing trust and showing how my interests could translate to a potential a stable career path, or if not even a stable career path, show that I have a, a fulfilling life. I would often share my articles that I wrote for the International Affairs newspaper. I would share insights that I learned from the environmental economics class to show that I am actually serious about this. And I think that there's a lot of potential uh, to bring about real change in the world and that I am driven to do so. And that it's not just some fantasy that a child has, but really there are other people who are doing this work as well. The third is reducing blame. Uh, so initially I would blame my parents for trying to push me into a certain career path and not letting me discover my true interests early on. And while of course they do play some sort of role in it, it's not entirely them, but rather the cultural and historical context that shaped their upbringing. This entire process of self-discovery, of looking back into the past and seeing how it has shaped my current self and how it guides my future uh, is all a continuous process. It is not just a one-time audit. So some ways that I make this a continuous process is first, on a daily basis, I like to journal and jot things down. I like to doodle um, just to make record of what actually happened. Second is on a weekly basis, I like to post photo dumps, again, just to uh, recall what happened and I can scroll back into certain memories. Uh, as a sort of visual diary. 
On a monthly basis, I write longer blog posts, so I take some of my journal entries and I reflect on them and really try to tie them together and synthesize across the days, weeks, months, and even years. And then on an annual basis, I complete this sort of annual in review. Uh, I use the template by Ali Abdal. I think about what I did in the past year, how it relates to my goals, uh, and what I want to focus on for the next year. I also keep track of my media consumption uh, through Goodreads, Google Keep, and Notion, just so I can always reflect on how uh, I absorb information and connect that to my own experiences. Now we have a ton of data on the question, who am I? And also, how did I become this way? So the next question that we'll be answering in the next video is, who will I be in the future? How will this shape my decision making? How can I take all of this data and transition it into actionable plans uh, and potential visions to really form a concrete identity and maybe map it to a career path or other practical applications? So stay tuned for that. I know that I've been interested in this since.